Good morning. I am City Council Member Keith Powers and Chair of the Committee on Criminal Justice. I'm joined here today by my colleagues, uh, Council Member Rory Lansman, Council Member Alika Amprey Samuel, Council Member Bob Holden, and we'll be joined by a few others shortly. We are here today to vote on four pieces of legislation relating to the well being of incarcerated individuals. Before we move to a vote, I want to, recon I want to recognize and express my deep condolences for Laileen Polanco, a transgender woman of color who passed away in Department of Correction custody last Friday. We still here at the council have a lot of questions about what happened, about why she was in jail for $500, about her medical condition, about the status of the investigation, and we're working tirelessly to get those answers. But before we move on to our vote today, I just ask that we take a moment of silence uh, in recognition of her passing. Thank you. Moving to today's vote, we will be voting on three bills aimed at improving the grievance process. First, we will vote on Council Member Ayala's bill, proposed introduction 1340A, which will require the Department of Corrections to make the grievance process more efficient by creating a central system where it can track all complaints. It will also ensure greater access to the grievance process by requiring at least one grievance box in each facility and by requiring electronic kiosks. The second is my bill proposed introduction 1370A, which will require all complaints made by incarcerated individuals uh, or on behalf of incarcerated individuals, the so three and one, to be addressed by the Office of Constituent and Grievance Services. Additionally, it will ensure the department informs every incarcerated individual in writing about the grievance process and about protections against retaliation. I just note that in light of our bill last year to improve access to telephone calls, the 3 one we, you know, I would expect the 311 system will be used more often, and I think this bill goes a long way to help those who will take advantage of that. The third is Councilmember Amprey Samuel's bill, proposed introduction 1334A, which will require the Board of Correction to issue reports regarding the correctional system's grievance process. Finally, we have one bill, which is my bill, focused on medical appointments and sick call. Proposed introduction 1236A would require the Department of Corrections to track data pertaining to clinical production in greater detail and to share such information with the Board of Corrections and Correctional Health Services. The bill will also require Correctional Health Services to take a more active role in rescheduling missed medical appointments. It will require the Department of Correction to retain all records having to do with sick call for the Board of Corrections review and would codify Board of Correction requirements to make sick call available five days a week, excluding holidays. I, I want to really thank, before we get to the vote, the staff here on the council, my staff as well. We spent a lot of time on some pieces of this legislation, ensuring that we get them correct, but making sure that they work for uh, all folks who are incarcerated and ensuring that for sick call and medical call, for instance, that we have a better process today after our hearing where I think many of us felt there were gaps in the process for uh, getting and receiving uh, medical and sick call, medical appointments and sick call. <clears throat> With that being said, I want to invite sponsors or committee members to make a statement prior to beginning to the vote. I think Council Member Amprey Samuel, we'll start with you. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, Chair Powers, for the opportunity to speak on intro 1334A. This bill involves the Department of Corrections grievance and complaint process, which you mentioned, and many of my colleagues are here, do, you know, the, our purpose is to, to do the right thing, and I say that all the time. We've read the statistics which say people in custody have unequal access to the complaint system, and it depends on the jail that you are housed in. However, it wasn't until I personally visited Rikers Island and then participated in the oversight hearings and heard testimony from advocates where it was realized that transparency and accountability was clearly missing from our policies. Um, bill uh, intro 1334A requires the Board of Correction to issue a report on the Department of Corrections grievance and complaint process, and it will also require that the Board of Corrections provide recommendations for improving the procedures and post it to their website. The bill is actually a direct response to the recommendations from the Board of Corrections. And again, it shows that people in custody have unequal access to the complaint systems. And this bill deals with the what happens next process. 
and it will hold the Department of Corrections accountable and will require an actual report on the grievance policies and recommendations. Um, so I'm excited about the passing of 1334A because we always talk about transparency and accountability, and this provides a real systematic change that will improve the conditions for everyone at the facilities. So thanks again, and I look forward to the vote. Great, thank you. So I think with that being said, we can open up the vote. Okay, we'll wait momentarily, thanks. Okay, and we will now begin the roll, and we've also been joined by Councilmember Rivera and Councilmember Levine. Go ahead. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on criminal justice. All items are coupled, chair powers. I vote aye. Lanceman. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Holden. Aye. Rivera. By a vote of five in the affirmative, zero. <laughs> Councilmember Levine. I vote aye, thank you. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you. With that vote, we are adjourned. Thanks.